Have you ever looked at a piece of art and stood in amazement thinking you were looking at a photograph? Welcome to the world of realism. In today's video, I'll be discussing the following. What is realism? Why is it important? How to start it for yourself? And on a more personal note, I explain why I pursue realism. But first things first though, I want to give full credit to the two artists that I featured in my intro. Go check out Zara and Michael and their incredible work. Their channels are linked in the description. When it comes to realism, many beginners think it's all about creating a perfect replica of reality, but that's not entirely true. So what exactly is realism? It's been around for centuries and it continues to be one of the most beloved and practiced art forms today. It might even be one of the most sought after skills for beginner artists, but don't quote me on that. Realism is an art style, just like abstract is an art style and impressionism is an art style. So when people think of realism, they often imagine perfectly replicating a scene, almost like you're taking a photograph. But Mimi, isn't that what realism is? Making it look and appear real? Sure. Realism is about being accurate and detailed, but it's not just about copying a photo. And here's where a lot of beginners might go wrong. You might think that realism is just about replicating what is in front of you, and therefore it is too limiting for true creativity. Well, that, in my opinion, is a big misconception. As we explore some concepts and ideas around realism, I'm showing you the progress on this bald eagle. And in today's video, you'll be watching me work on the beak as I'm starting to put in some details and work on the realism of this beautiful bird. The essence of realism is about capturing the truth. It's about portraying the real world imperfections and all. With realism, the goal is to showcase the essence of reality. The emotions, the textures, the subtleties that make a piece of art come alive. Realism is actually about observing the world deeply and interpreting it, keyword interpreting, interpreting it in a way that communicates more than just a superficial resemblance. And you're also trying to capture the mood, the emotions, and the character of the subject. As an example, a portrait, whether it's a human or an animal, isn't just about making someone's face look like it does in real life. It's actually about capturing their presence, their personality, their soul. Now here's a little history lesson. Realism in art really started gaining momentum in the 19th century as a response to the grandiose and idolized images that dominated art at that time. Artists wanted to shift the focus from mythical, romanticized subjects to the realities of everyday life. People at work, landscapes as they truly appeared, and portraits that were not dressed up or overly dramatized. This movement was revolutionary because it showed that the ordinary could be beautiful, that real life, raw and unpolished, was worth capturing in all its authenticity. Well, it looks like history is repeating itself. In today's modern world, we are bombarded by fake images, AI-generated art, filters on Instagram posts and TikToks, and actually, people are tired of it. They are yearning for authenticity and real people with real stories, overcoming real struggles. So if you're trying to pursue realism in your art, I'd say you'll be doing society a huge service. I do want to talk about one massive misconception about realism. And that is that it's only for super talented artists that if you're not a natural born artist, you'll never be able to achieve realism. Well, I have a video about why I don't believe in talent and that it's a ridiculous mindset. So if you're interested in that, you can find the link in the description. But the bottom line is realism is a skill that can be learned. And I'll expand on that a bit more, but later in this video. 
I believe that realism will continue to evolve. We see it in portraits, in landscapes, still life, and even in modern hyperrealism, where artists create images so lifelike, they could be mistaken for photographs, which is what I have been trying to achieve in my own art. But at times I do need to tell myself that realism isn't just about what's visible on the surface. It's about translating the real world into something more personal, something that resonates on an emotional and spiritual level. Now, you might be wondering, why is realism such an important part of art? In a world that's often chaotic, fast-paced, and yes, a whole lot of crazy, realism forces us to slow down and really observe. It encourages us to look at the world with fresh eyes. When we paint in a realistic style, we're not just putting something on a canvas, we're paying close attention to the small details that make life beautiful, and these things are the things we often overlook. Think about it. How often do we walk past a scene in nature or glance at someone's face without really seeing it? Realism brings attention to these moments. It makes them matter and it gives it meaning. A well done realistic painting can freeze a moment in time and show all its details. Like the way the sunlight filters through leaves or how a smile can reveal so much about a person's mood or character. When I look at a realistic painting, and I'm not talking about my own hair, I just have to stop and pause and really look. What am I seeing here? Well, initially, my brain is overwhelmed by the intricate details and is trying to pull it apart and put it together all at the same time. It forces me to really take a good look, and by doing so, it disconnects me from whatever else that might be going on in my head. I truly have no choice but to be in the moment, and it pulls me out of my normal day-to-day, -day, which can be so therapeutic, and it can actually really help ground me. Realism has also allowed us to freeze moment in time, whether it's historical, political, social, or personal. Throughout the centuries, it has documented real life moments, keeping them alive for generations to come. Paintings from the 19th and 20th centuries, for instance, give us a glimpse into the daily lives of people from way back when. These paintings are more than just art. They're historical records that help us understand how people lived, how they worked, and how they experienced life. These art pieces serve as windows into different eras and help remind us of the human experience throughout history. And if you think about it, a hundred years from now, artists will look at our work and learn from how we are living today. And because you painted something that seems rather normal and day to day, you've just become part of the art history for future generations. No pressure. But even beyond that, realism in art offers a way to connect with others emotionally. By capturing real, relatable moments, realism evokes emotions in the viewer. Whether it's a portrait that makes you feel like you're looking directly into someone's eyes, or a landscape that transports you to a specific place. And when you paint pet portraits, you directly cater to the relationship and emotions that connect the owner and the animal. It is a very powerful bond, and to be able to translate that on canvas is a lovely journey for the artist, and ultimately an extension of that relationship and a forever memory for the owner. So why is realism important? because it reminds us of the beauty and complexity of life. And that's why it remains such a vital part of the art world. The art of realism, and yes, pun intended, is to make you stop and pause and notice the fine details that otherwise might go unnoticed. Well, 
how do you start realism? Now, getting started with realism might seem overwhelming at first, but like anything, it's just a skill that can be learned through patience, practice, and a whole lot of repetition. I truly believe that anyone can learn realism. So don't tell yourself it's too lofty of a goal or that you are simply not talented enough. That's a lie. So stop believing in it. Realism needs a framework that it can build upon. So it is important to have some foundational skills in your pocket. Take time to learn the fundamentals, proportions, anatomy, perspective, and composition. Yes, it's a mouthful, but these are the building blocks of any great realism painting. I do have a video about the grid and sketch method, as well as a video about the blocking in stage of a painting. And I'll link them in the description so you can go ahead and check those out if that's of interest to you. One of the most important aspects of learning realism is observation. Now this might sound obvious, but it's a skill you have to train and I'm still working on this as well. It's not just about looking at something, it's about truly seeing. Now a simple exercise you can do is take an object like an apple, place it on a desk or a table and shine a light on it. Now change the angle you shine that light, but you stay in the same spot. What did you notice? Did some textures or colors change? Some of these changes are really subtle and barely noticeable, but it's those details that will make a painting come alive. Whether it's a landscape or a face, understanding how light interacts with form is essential. Now I use reference photos and mine are digital. And the benefit of that is that I can zoom in quite far. But hello, that makes it blurry. Yep, it does. And that's exactly what you need. At the normal size, it looks perfect, right? Crisp, sharp, detailed. The moment you zoom in, that changes because then you get to focus and work with the shapes and values. And that is what will make your realism pop. So it's not as difficult as one might think is really about a different perspective. Details are nothing but small color changes and shapes placed in the right spots because remember, it's a painting. You're essentially creating an illusion and making the eye believe it's seeing a realistic part of that subject. We're magicians really, if you think about it. I'm going to talk about proportions for a minute. You need to get this as close as spot on as you can get. Because if your eye, your nose or nostril, whatever you're working on, is just even half a centimeter or like an eighth of an inch off, or the angle of the eyes is off by a few degrees, your painting will not look realistic. So make sure you lay a strong foundation before starting with details. That framework will make or break your realism. So my advice is to work on that as you venture into realism land. Another key is color mixing. You can't just rely on the color straight out of the tube if you're aiming for realism. You have to learn how to mix your paints to create colors that are true to life, whether you're painting skin tones, natural landscapes, fabric colors, or animal fur. This is still a trial and error part for me and I'm learning as I go. So a little deep dive in color theory might help you and probably me as well. Don't forget to study other artists. Without some of the amazing artists here on YouTube, I would not have been able to get where I am now. Watch other artists explain how they achieve realism. Some give amazing tutorials and others, they showcase their work without explanation. But you know what? Both formats will help you. Try different type of paintings, landscapes, still life, animals, or human faces. Experiment with different brushes and different brush techniques. See what works for you. Not every artist will use the exact same brushes and or techniques, but they still get amazing realistic results. Watch and learn. I'm going to link a few channels in the description to artists that I follow and have learned from and that I'm still learning from. 
Try to keep things simple. Not every part of your painting needs to be hyper-realistic. In fact, that's going to confuse whoever looks at it, as well as exhaust you. If you make every square inch of that canvas realistic, you'll be overwhelming your brain and hurting your eyes. A basic rule I go by is to decide what parts of my subject needs to pop out and focus my details and realism on those sections only, as too many details is simply overwhelming and the brain has to work really hard to make sense of it. In my opinion, the best way to learn is through experience. You can study realism and learn about it until you're blue in the face. But if you don't put that brush on canvas, you have only gained knowledge, but never learned the skill. Realism actually requires a lot of creative thinking, problem solving and experimentation. So make mistakes, learn from them and laugh at yourself and go again. This is not a skill you gain overnight. So be willing to take the time to stick to the process and practice patience. But with every painting and every practice, every mistake, you're gonna become a better artist and you will be able to develop this skill. Now, let me share a bit about why I personally pursue realism in my own art. Well, first and foremost, I like a challenge. I was watching and observing other artists creating these stunning pieces of realistic art, and I figured if others are doing it, I can too. I'm not the kind of person to put myself in a box and label something as too difficult, because in fact, <laughs> that makes me want to go and pursue it even more. Now, I also spent some time with a good friend of mine who is also an artist and she actually pointed out to me as we were doing some art together, hey, you really like realism and you're actually kind of good at it too. And I already was on a quest to create more realism in my paintings, but when she confirmed that and admired my work and the dedication that I put into it, I actually realized that I thrive and I come alive when putting in itty bitty teeny weeny details. For me, pursuing realism isn't so much about portraying an emotional connection with whatever subject I'm painting, but it's more a chasing of that euphoric feeling that I get whilst painting these realistic details. It's almost like a drug, but a very therapeutic and healthy one. It's a form of meditation in a way. And when I paint, I always have worship music playing and I'm often singing or worshiping along and I'm totally my element and happy and content. And I mean, who doesn't want to be in that frame of mind? But with that said, there's something incredibly powerful about capturing a moment so accurately that someone else feels like they could reach out and touch the painting or that they could just step into the scene you've created. It's not so much about an emotional connection for me, but it's an emotional connection for them. It's also not about showing off my skills to others, even though it feels good to get compliments. But at the end of the day, I need to be excited and content when I look at my work. And pursuing realism sure elevated my art skills and makes me feel proud of my own art pieces. For me, it's also about expressing my appreciation of the beauty of this world that God has created and I really hope to portray that as accurately as possible. And I'm still on my journey, but I'm dedicated and determined to get better at it. One brush stroke at a time. Realism is a rewarding and challenging art form. So whether you're a beginner or an experienced artist, there's always more to learn and discover. So, what is holding you back to start your journey into realism? Don't be intimidated by the process. Start small, take your time, and be patient with yourself. Every time you practice, you'll get a little bit better. And it won't be without challenges and mistakes. But I am sure that the skill you develop will definitely be worth it in the end. Now, if you have any questions or experiences you'd like to share, please leave them in the comments below. And if you want to challenge your mindset about talent, 
go check out that video. It's up on the screen for you. Stay happy, keep your peace, and God bless you. Bye-bye.